Ladies and gentlemen, joining us today, we have a lady who have had and continue to have an outstanding career in the media, entertainment, and music industry. She is one third of the trio that brought us the 291 Club, along with Miles Crawford and Tony Gully, which will be revived once again with its three hosts returning at its ancestral home at the Hatton Empire this November. It is my pleasure to have joining us today Elaine Smith, whose distinguished achievements and amongst many include first female daytime radio presenter in London and first female appointment to A&R manager at Emmy Records UK. Hey, Elaine. Hey, Silver. Good, good. Thank you for coming on to Thank the show. Thank you for having me. Good. Thank it's a you. pleasure. You know what I mean? I, I think it's so important that we honor greatness. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, I had um, Sherry Ann Dixon. <gasps> yeah. Love her. She was the first guest on oh. the red chair. And uh, I said to her that she's a legend. She is. Yes. She is. You know, and sometimes legends are sometimes not recognized, but they are still legends. Yeah. You know? And since I come to the UK, 1992, um, and through the circuit, I've heard about Elaine Smith. And I don't know exactly how we met, but over the years or so, there's a mutual respect for DJ Elaine Smith, you know? Can I tell you how we met? Yes. You were running for the Conservative Party. Yes. Locally. And you guessed on my show. Yes. And um, I think I still have a photograph of that, so I'm going to send it through to oh you. Oh, wow, oh, wow. So you can see that photograph, yeah. Oh, wow, oh, and wow. And you came on Colourful Radio. Colourful, yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. That's right, came on Colourful yes. Radio. And, um, yeah, I interviewed you there, and that's how I met you. Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. And, you know, I was thinking about it, it was 2012, at the Usain Bolt thing at the, um, the, the big O2. Oh, right, you're Jamaica. A DJ? Yes, that's yes. right. Yes, you're a DJ oh, in there. Oh, that was a proud moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica House. Jamaica House. Yeah. Yes, that's what right. this, and that's always trying to work out where exactly, you know. But it, it's great. It's yeah, great. It and, um, you know, and the reason why I actually wanted to have you on the, the, the show was when I saw the resumption and the excitement about the 291 Club, you know. And um, of course, I wasn't here or being involved at that time, but I want to just break down for me what the 291 Club is about. Well, firstly, um, one of the most common questions that's asked is why is it called the 291 Club? Yes, yes. And 291 Club is named after the address of the Hackney Empire. Yes. So it's 291 Mare Street, mm -hmm. E8, 1EJ, I yes, think it is. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's the first thing. Um, it's a 291 Club. Uh, variety and talent search mm -hmm. competition. So that's what that's what it is. It's a variety mm -hmm. show that encompasses comedians, um, variety acts, and the competition is a competition which encompasses the same. Which is the original X Factor and original pop idol. Then. Well, we precede it actually. Yeah, that's what I mean. The yeah. original, the original. Oh right, I get, okay, original. Yeah, we the original. It because we, <coughs> first we had the Opportunity Knocks and all of those shows that we yeah. all grew up on uh, with Huey Green and that. Um, but there was a massive gap. Yes. Where the talent shows weren't on TV anymore, yes. and um, when it came about was when I was presenting on LWR doing a yes. breakfast show yeah. and what was happening is that the record companies would send us because we were prime time would send us a lot of their material to yes. play and no disrespect major record companies entirely grateful for how you used to service us and that but a lot of it was just very mediocre yeah. you know and it was beautifully packaged which you knew that they spent a lot of money on it but it was in our opinion, we could find better, better artists yeah. on the estate next door. So I used to get these um, <coughs> tunes and I used to go on air and I used to open the package on air and I, because I didn't have time to do it before yes, yes. and listen to it. And sometimes I'd say that the only thing left to do with this is for you it as a frisbee. Yeah. Car. <laughs> you know what I mean? See a little bit. Yeah. You know, so um, then I thought, let me put my money where my mouth is. And I 
began to run auditions at the Oasis yeah. in um, Dalston and turned it into a night. We called it, I then called it the Midnight at the Oasis because mm. I used to start the talent show. Is the song called it? Midnight, Midnight at, at the, the Oasis. Oasis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maria Muldoon. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's why I started the competition at midnight and called it Midnight at the Oasis. Yeah. Within about two or three weeks, it was jam packed corks in there. So we had to move it from there and we took it to the West End, Pal Joey's. Whilst it was at Pal Joey's, um, Bev Randall. I can't remember which way, I think it was Bev Randall yeah. that brought <coughs> Charlie Hansen down, mm. who I made a judge on the night, and he loved it so much that he, on the night that he was there, he said, look, I'm approaching the Hackney Empire to do a variety show, and would I like to make my talent quest a part of that variety yes. show? Well, it would be rude to say no, right? Yes. So yes. I said yes, and um, I think we ran about, one series down there but I, I just remember mm. the Hackney Empire being so empty just yes. the first few rows of our friends and family yeah. you know cheering us on and uh, one night all of a sudden Bev said brace yourself wow. we have to start late because the queues were going round the corner oh. you know when we got there it was just packed to the rafters yes. and I guess that was it and then, sorry, um, as I'm in flow, mm. uh, Hackney brought down one of the commission editors from LWT, yeah. who was actually in the audience at the, at, on the night. And uh, at the end of the show, he gave us time on television. Yes, yes. So the audience of the 291 Club makes the show. So can I ask, you know, like the Apollo in America? Yeah. And uh, when people get booed. Yeah. I mean, and you got to actually live through that bit. Did that happen there? What, what was the crowd like? The crowd <laughs> were merciless. <laughs> merciless. <laughs> they were like, but we warned every single artist yes. that get on that stage. Yeah. One of the first thing we say to you is make sure your appearance is good. Yeah. I.e. do not be wearing white socks with sandals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. before you open your mouth, you will get booed. Yeah, yeah. But they were fair because when I look back at the tapes that I have now, the people that they did boo, no one deserves to get booed. Yes. But because the the, the audience had so much power. You're saying they should power, get booed still. <laughs> you mean, well, you've got to come with your A game. Yeah. You know, you're either going to get a cheer yeah. or you're going to get a oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to come with your A game, right? And the people that they cheer for really do deserve it. Mm. And then there was sometimes like, um, which was the 291 audience, you can't really predict them. We had um, an artist come on, white guy, he was lovely. He came on and he did Gladys All Over. Yeah. And the whole crowd were like, Gladys All Over. Yeah. Uh, uh, ooh. Yeah. Glad. And they were all singing. Yeah, yeah. They were all singing and we thought, wow, he's going to go through. And then they were like, boo, at the end of the song. <laughs> it's like they're waiting. For, well, <laughs> is it like the audience were all in sync with each other at the same time? They really were. They really, really were. And they knew were. where they were going. But, but they were natural about yeah, it. Yeah. They were very natural about you it. You really loved it, isn't it, Elaine? You really oh, loved that moment. I loved the 291 Club. It was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just like... No disrespect to X Factor or the likes of, because mm. I, I salute anything, any yes. platform yes. that's giving artists a platform. Yeah. So I salute that. Um, the difference between the 291 Club and the likes of the X Factor is that you've got five judges on the X Factor yeah. that's making up their minds yes. of the fate of this particular person. Part particular person. With the 291 Club, it really is the audience as a collective, naturally. They're not conferring with each other. Yes. They are reacting to what they're, Instant, that, that they're seeing on stage. It's natural. Yeah. So if you can survive the 291 audience, mm -hmm. you're pretty much ready for anywhere. So is there anyone that you can think of from the 291 Club period who has gone through into like mainstream, so-called mainstream? Well, Skunk and Nancy, yeah. who was called Deborah Ann Dyer at the time. Yeah. She got booed yeah. at the 291 Club, but, you know, she was just very funky, but she yeah. went on to become Skunk and Nancy, mm. huge. Then we had Eternal. Okay, yeah. 
Um, we had um, the comedian, I always forget his name and I shouldn't. Um, what's his name? Is it Pemberton? Um, like it'll come back to yeah. me, but he's massive still. Yes. Bald headed guy. Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but he's massive still. He yeah. came through the 291 Club and there's quite a few. Lloyd Brown, he tells the story mm. that his career, even though he was a PA, a special guest on the 291 yeah. Club, that that appearance he said he couldn't go shopping anymore because of the impact the 291 club had on him when he um performed on on, on the live show yeah, yeah. so you, you had two other persons you got miles crawford the yes. comedian and you also um is Gully. tony gully the tony sand gully, man tony gully. So, so when was that sort of um combination or that sort of gelling of the three the three, three of us yeah well um as i said when, when we took the talent show to the Hackney Empire, mm. initially I was speaking to the judges. I was doing a lot of work. And doing the opening as well. I was doing some videos, a lot yeah. of work, yeah. yeah. And um, I was even doing the whole, what do you think of act number one? What do you think of act? Doing yeah. all of that. And it just developed. Yeah. I think Miles came on as a special guest and went down very well. So he was invited Hi, to do, be the clapometer yeah. man. And uh, Tony Gully was a member of staff the yes. at the Hackney Empire, and he's just a lovable character. Yes. So he came in to kind of play games with the audience. Yes. So, but then he became a fixture as he then, we developed the role of him being a Sandman, yeah, because yeah. it was a case of, right, if the audience are booing, how do we get the act off stage? Sandman. Yeah. So he then came on in these various guises with the broom okay. as Zorro, as a policeman. So yeah. he made a big <laughs> thing of it where he just kind of surprised the audience yeah. each week. Each time when he comes up with, with something, something different. Yeah. I just wonder if this was Jamaica I saw it from or whatever like that. But I know you see the bits of it, you know what I mean? And um, the acting part, because I, I work opposite there, but um, that wasn't during the course of that time. You know, no, no. The late, late, yeah, because yeah. the oceans came, I think, afterwards. Yeah. Because that's a quite a new venue, mm, mm. Oceans. Yeah. So tell me now, what was the triggering factor now that said, bang, let's get this back on the road? Oh, <laughs> I tell you what, social media yeah. is amazing. Social, so, media. social media is like the audience that is leading the way, pushing. Yeah, yeah every yeah. time you kind of mention the 291 Club yeah. or Lloyd Brown reposted his performance at the 291 mm. Club, and I reposted it, it must have been 2016. Yes. And sort of like tagged the old crew members in, Charlie Hansen, you know, um, Miles Crawford, Tony, the whole shebang, mm. and said, you know, let's do like a, a, a resurrection show, if you like, a, yes. um, I don't know, a relaunch show, a re reunion show, that kind of thing. Yes. And the audience just jumped on it and said, yeah, I'll come, yeah, yes. I'll come, yes. yeah, I'll come. So, um, because the only place it could be done is at the Hackney Empire, and that cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. it's taken this length of time to actually get that money together yes. to walk into the 291 Club with our piggy bank and say, see the deposit, yeah, we we'll want it, yes, you know, yes. and booked it. And so Miles and I are now directors, and the two of us has put our money on the table. And so here we are. Fantastic. So good, good. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back to something controversial, because there was some sort of eruption which took place that also sparked the resumption of the 291 Club. Thank you. For effective social media marketing, check out GH & Co. Marketing Solutions. Let us help you through strategic and creative planning. We offer social media management, website development and maintenance, newsletter content creations, graphic designs, and lots more digital marketing services. Call 074-808-47925. Email us at ghmarketingsolutions at gmail.com. Follow us on social media at GH Marketing Solutions or visit www.ghmarketingsolutions.com GH and Co. Marketing Solutions Making or clients vision or vision 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Silver and Show. And I've got the 291 Club, one of the trios, um, Elaine Smith, DJ Elaine Smith. Elaine, how are you doing again? I'm fine, thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm glad we weren't at the Atlee Empire actually trying to <laughs> sand off some people and booing them, you know? You won't boo me today, will you? Absolutely <laughs> not. How can I be? Look at you. <laughs> well, listen, Elaine, um, I'll be honest with you. Um, what really spurred me on, actually, about the 291 Club, I, it's so funny. Things sometimes happen on social media. You mentioned social media a while ago, which is every time 291 Club. Well, it was 291 Club and some things on social media that perked my ears. And I started to say, what is this 291 Club? <laughs> and then upon reviewing it and going, you know, checking, I said, wow, this is wicked, man. I didn't know about this because, you know, I'm a new kid from Jamaica, even though I've been here a couple of year, few years now. And tell us what you can, you know, I, you know, I, you know about... There was something that, that happened there. Uh, it was like somebody with a tech with your thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you say, more want it back, you know, or, or something like that, you know? But it, it has sparked this movement now to get the 201 Club back on the track. All right. Uh, let me begin by saying yeah. that, um, yes, you're right. Um, I felt insulted. Mm -hmm. I felt as though... Um, I felt as though this person paid me a disservice. Yes. Because, you know, when I first learnt that he had registered it in his name, mm -hmm. um, I immediately called a meeting with him. And the upshot of that meeting was, you know, prove that the show is yours. Yes, yes. Being a Jamaican I, like yourself, even yeah. though I was born here, I was just like, okay, cool. So I came out of that meeting and I drove around the corner and then I proceeded to register um, all the domains I could mm -hmm. under the original 291 Club because yeah. whatever it is that you've got, it's not the 291 Club. And in my mind, as I pointed out to him, um, whatever the 291 Club is based on a big stage yes and it's the judge's choice and the people's voice yes. anything other than that is not the 291 club yes and he changed it dramatically so why are you calling it the 291 club number one you mm. know what i mean it's a bit like having a tin of i don't know it's a bit like Jerk rice. Who's ever heard of it? <laughs> That's a good one. Jerk rice. You yeah, know, yeah. or a, t a can of Heinz baked beans. Yeah. And you, you expect to get Heinz baked beans. You open the can and it's green peas. Yes. It's yes. not the 291. Moreover, it is my show. Yes. You know? So I didn't kick up a fuss. I just went away because to get the Hackney Empire, it's a lot of money. Yeah. So I just bided my time knowing that I've got a whole bunch of tapes that I would need to call upon, you know, um, as part of the marketing. Yes. And um, during that two years, I couldn't figure out how to digitalize the VHSs. Mm -hmm. Hang with me, I'm getting to it. All right. And um, I bought some, I don't know, apparatus, whatever you'd like, some equipment yes. offline. Um, but I, you know, it was the wrong leads or the, the, they kept sending me the wrong leads. Yeah, anyway, yes. I realised that they was a no-good company. Yes. And then um, I think it was when I decided to resign from radio, uh, December 2017, mm -hmm. because I thought, right, I'm spending so much time on radio and I really want to get this up and I've got to focus on it. So um, I focused on it, got myself the right equipment, and then I proceeded to start digitalising the tapes. Yes. So it was one fateful uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. I um, had done my first clip and was about to proudly put it up yes. online because as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what he's doing, mm -hmm. I'm bringing back the 291 yes, Club, yes. right? Under the heading, the original 291 yes. Club. So that one o'clock in the morning, I'd, um, because I'd registered the YouTube so long ago, two years ago, I couldn't find it. Yes. 
So I had to Google it. So I Googled the original 291 Club. Yes. When I Googled that, the, the first person that came up was with the, was the, the person, culprit, yes, yes. right? Uh, doing an interview, um, citing himself as the, um, the original founder, mm. or one of the original founders. Well, the blood just rushed to my head, didn't it? <laughs> How dare yeah, you? Yeah. It's bad enough that you've taken it, and now you're citing yourself as the original founder. No, you was nowhere yes. to be seen. Yes. So, um, if I, I mean, I've, I, I, I saved it, the original post that I put up. Mm. And the original post that I put up was real. It really came from a place of anger. Yes, yes. You know. <coughs> but I thought, no, Elaine, you're going to go from a place of truth because, you know, I'm sick to death of our history being changed. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, since you've put it up that you are the original, one of the original co-founders, yeah. then history has to be corrected. Yes. So let me put the story up, you know, mm. who is the original and how it came about. Yes. The only thing I didn't do was change the first line because I needed that to serve as a gone shot in yes. the air. Yes. So it was, what the ras is this? <laughs> <laughs> bruh, bruh. Yeah. Yes, so yes. that was my gunshot. And then I proceeded to be eloquent mm. and stick to the point. Now, the thing for me that I really wished he hadn't had done this because subsequently a lot of people were saying, oh, this isn't the platform to do it on. This isn't the platform yeah, to do I've it on. Seen the and yeah. of course, it's not the platform to do it on. But I called the meeting. Right. This mm. was one o'clock in the morning. I don't have no more talk with you. You know, I'd done as much as I could do. Yes. And even then I had to chase you for that meeting. Um, I've now put it up. It's one o'clock in the morning. Within 20 minutes, he was replying. So either somebody had gone to him or he had seen it himself. And instead of picking up the phone and going, in the end, we're at door mm. and talk about it, I would have taken it down. Mm. He decided to put up one piece of essay and mm. justify his movements. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And to me, all right, fine, you know, if Woolworths or even the X Factor or any one of them hadn't registered their thing, yes. anyone could have gone and registered it and they wouldn't have had a, a leg to stand yes. on. So, yeah, legally, you're all right. But hold on a minute. You're talking to me, mm -hmm. right? I'm your friend. When I went to EMI Records, I called you. You wanted to give me mate for mates rates for your services. Mm. I says, no, they've got the money. They don't mind. They will pay you full whack. Yeah. Put money in his pocket a couple of times still. Yeah. That, that um, summer, there's pictures where me and him are hugged and hugging and kissing. Yes. And when he hugged me, he says, don't worry, Elaine. I won't leave you out. I'll sort you out. Yeah. But no, you didn't. Yes. You went ahead. And then on social media, you want to justify your movements by saying that because I didn't register it, mm -hmm. you thought you would do it. That's like me dropping my purse with my driver's license mm -hmm. in it or, or leaving it at your house or outside in your garden, you picking it up, reading the, the license and mm -hmm. saying that, do you know what I mean? Even though you know yeah. it's mine. So, so, so what have you learned? Uh, what, what is the message that has, this has given to you that you can give to others in dealing with people, also dealing with our people? as well you know is there something that you learned about this that made it well it's wiser? nothing that i didn't already know to be honest with mm. you um you know what i what i would say though is that you can't trust anybody because since that funny enough the amount of phone calls i got yeah you know inbox messages saying either what he's done to them or what other people's done to them. Mm. Everybody kind of, um, you know, relaying their story of disappointment mm. with people. Um, and I'm thinking to myself that what I got from that, first of all, yeah. is the people that do that to other people, they rely on the fact that you, you're not going to go in the public go domain to talk yeah, about yeah, it, yeah. right? 
because a lot of people were saying to me, are we laying this ain't the right keep place, it, this ain't the right, hush, keep yeah. it down, find it, you know, some people were saying like, you know, I will be the go-between and the adjudicator, was it the adjudicator, adjudicator for, yeah, for yeah. you and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm thinking, well, he's made it public and mm. according to him, he's done n a number of shows, in mm. which case, you know, I said it in public, if you've done that, then you owe me some money, mm. do you know what I mean? So he's put that in public saying that he owns it or yes. he whatever. Yeah. So then I have to put that right in yes. public. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? He had the opportunity to squash it. I would have taken it down. Mm. You know, nobody would have been none the wiser. So, so, so what I would say to people mm. is that not even your your, your family, because I had things stories from where family has cheated other people. Uh, the, their families cheated mm. family. What I would say is to um, be business like. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that we fail on. We yeah. have all the talent, but we don't realise that our talent is business. Yes, it's, it's a brand, it's a product, isn't it's a it? Bra it's a product. And, and one of the things that, one of the stories that I like to fall back on is actually a story from the Bible where I can't remember the names, but there were th there's this king and he had three servants, right? Mm. And he was going off. And back in those days, they used to call money talent. Yes. Right? Five, three and one. That's right, yeah. they called it talent, right? Mm. And um, he went away and he gave them this talent. Yeah, he gave one five, yeah. Yes, that's what five, three, and one. Yeah, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. the story. Yeah, know the story and else, he yeah. came back, just to, so that th the viewers who don't know, he came back and he called number one. He said, what did you do with it? Mm. And, well, I did this and I've multiplied it. Oh, yeah. well done, blah, blah, blah. Second one, multiplied it, well done. Blah, yeah. blah. The third one, well, I know that you are an unfair king. Yeah. and you know, and I know that you want what's yours and what's not yours, so, so I buried it. it. Yes. I buried it. And he had so most talents, in it? So he took away, the, he said, go away, you're whatless. Yeah. I've given you this and you haven't multiplied it, you're whatless. Since mm. you know that I'm fair and un, I'm unfair, mm. then you should have made more money for me. Yes, yes. Right? So the point I'm making is that money, um, your talent is your money. Yes. It was called money, the talent was, money was called talent back then. Yes. So the talent is your gift that you've been given, which affords you to turn that into money. So there's yes. no shame in that. Mm -hmm. There's no shame in, you know, asking for money for your services. There's yes. no shame in it. But let's, let's do it the right way. Let's dot the I's and cross the T's. Yes. Miles Crawford phoned me up before the evening was ended and said, oh, You should have been here, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> you know he said let's just register it yeah. as a company and um, when he said that to me I said you know what he didn't ask for anything I said you know what how would you like to be yeah the other partner because that's another thing it's good to have partners yes I'm a hard worker a lot of my ideas come to fruition you know but one of the things for me it's very difficult to work with no money mm. and on your own mm. so since teaming up with miles it's been fantastic because he's a hard worker and it makes sense because he was one of the original members yeah. and you know when we brought tony gully and that was it boom yeah. and this other person would have made up the four yeah and yeah. it would have been fine all you had to do was call the original team yes. back together yes. because yes. you know what a hundred percent of nothing is nothing. Mm. Powerful. A hundred percent of nothing is nothing. Yes. Totally, yes. Right? So what we did is we the first thing we did is that we went to the Hackney Empire because like I said, that was my dream to bring it back, but it couldn't go anywhere else mm. other than the Hackney Empire. Mm -hmm. Even if it was just the launch, we got do. It's 291. It's a 291. It's got to go back there yes. to begin with. So we went back there. They were happy to have it back. Even the staff that were there, it was before their time. Yeah. We showed them the tapes. They were just enthralled. Yes. And, um, but they didn't give us any concessions. Yes. We've had to pay the full whack. Yes. And Miles and I gathered our m pence together and we put the money on the table. Then the funny thing was is that we came out and we said, <laughs> We now no money for make the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, 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 that's interesting. Well, that's why you're here. We're gonna make sure we make the show. So, when is the next? Um, when is the big show then? 
the 9th of November 2018. 9th of November 2018. And at the moment you're having all these different auditions going yes, on. Yes. And when is the next audition? Well, the auditions are happening now. Yes. And we're taking advantage of social media. Mm -hmm. And um, what we're asking people to do is to either send us some links to their performances. Yes. Or, you know, just record themselves for two minutes mm -hmm. and send it in to Mr. McKenzie, yes. uh, who's our overseer, uh, to auditions at 291club.co.uk. Wow. And, and um, you mentioned about VHS earlier. Yes. And uh, these are the normal tapes that you push in the video. Yes. Uh, when I was at law school, I did a rap. And you did. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, I was actually, um, I think, what was that? It was. It takes two. Easy Rock and mm. Easy Rock. It takes two. Rob Bass and Easy Rob Rock. Rob Bass and Easy Rock. Yeah. And I play. I was a rapper in it, and uh, I have the VHS. And I've been saying. I keep telling people say, and they say, "Oh, we need to see evidence of that." I need to talk to you because I need to get it digitalized. I will digitalize that You're for gonna, you. Absolutely. Wow, wow. But I've got to watch you while you do it and take it back <laughs> out. You know, I don't want to do it. Like, no, it's bad. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's really bad. So yeah. I so, won't hold you to hostage. <laughs> I won't. I won't blackmail you. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you, you heard the bit about the, the two nine one club. We we'll take a break and come right back. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silverne Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.